Shanna here. Welcome back to my channel all about finding joy while learning to live well with autoimmunity. I'm so happy to have you here. Um, today I'm going to be talking about how I told my kids about my autoimmune disease, about my Hashimoto's. This is a topic that somebody um, reached out to me about a month or so ago on Instagram. They DM me and say, Shanna, can you tell? I was just diagnosed. I'm you know, I'm a homeschooling mom, I have five kids, I'm not functioning. Can you tell me what, um, how you handled it with your kids? And it's a topic that is near and dear to my heart because it was a very emotional thing f um, for me. And so I've kind of like put it on hold um, until I felt ready to open up and talk about it. Um, it's one of those things where hindsight's 2020. And so just know that today I am taking off my practitioner cap. I am taking off my um, nutritional therapy practitioner hat and that I'm just speaking as an autoimmune warrior, as a mama. Um, and we have Zoe here. Um, I'm not sure if she's gonna hang out with us or if she's gonna take off or fall asleep at some point. Okay, so I'm gonna share a few things that my husband and I intentionally did um, around the time of my rock bottom and my diagnosis. Um, but first, a disclaimer that this is simply what we decided to do. I'm not saying that this is right. I'm not saying that this is right for your family. I'm just saying this is how we handled it with our kids. We tried first and foremost to prayerfully follow the spirit and handle it in a way that that felt right for our family. Also, first of all, I really just want to honor how difficult this is. I know that for me, it was hard to even think back to this time because I, I was a homeschooling mom and I went from, um, we were living in Southern California at the time and we would go to you know the beach and to museums and to zoos and to field trips and to Disneyland and doing all the things. I was a very hands-on homeschooling mom. I was very active um, with you know playing baseball with our son, um, swimming with the kids, being very active, going on hikes and walks and doing all the things. And so to go from that, I gradually, I won't go very much into my Hashimoto story, but I'll link it if you have, if you're not um, familiar with it. But I, I went from that to gradually losing my health over the course of a number of years. And I just kept pushing my body because I couldn't figure out what was wrong. Doctors couldn't find out what was wrong. And so I tried to act like I was fine. And so I, I did try to hide my symptoms for a number of years until I hit my rock bottom and I couldn't push my body anymore. My body finally said enough. I'm done. Our kids at the time of my rock bottom were 10 and 12. And so it's been a number of years since then. They're almost 14 and 16. So they were 10 and 12. And so we tried, we made the decision early on at my rock bottom. I was working with a naturopath and she, she specifically told us, told me not to tell my kids, to shield them from it, to to act like everything was okay. And maybe that's the right choice for some families. It did not resonate with my husband and I, number one, because um, I felt like who would I be fooling? My kids had a front row seat. They saw me go from this certain way to this other way. And I wanted to be clear with them that my inability to do the things I used to do had nothing to do with them. Something else that I intentionally did and had to understand, and it I didn't understand it at first and it took me time, is that I had to understand that I was exactly the kind of mama that my kids needed even at my rock bottom and that um, there are so many different ways of showing up as a mom and, as, and of being there for our kids. And for so many years, I thought it looked like being super mom and doing all the things and taking them all, all of the places. And I think that's why it was so hard on me because I had to go from that to understanding that I can show my, that the most important thing was that I show my kids love and acceptance and be there for them. And there's so many different ways that we can be there for them. I hit my rock bottom and I didn't get, even though I was working with a naturopath, I didn't get a diagnosis for a number of weeks. And it's not like we, my husband and I sat down and had a, a like an official conversation with our kids and told them like, this is what's going on. It was more like natural. We kept what we did share very age appropriate. And that's something that, you know, each of us as parents have, have a choice to make and to choose how much we share. And so I got my diagnosis in January 2018 and my doctor told me that I had Hashimoto's and that there was nothing I can do about it, that um, I did not need any kind of medicine yet and that this was just my new normal. And I did not go home and tell our kids <laughs> 
I have an incurable autoimmune disease and there's nothing I can do about it. And this is how the rest of my life is gonna be. It's not like we did that. My husband and I talked. We always try to keep a positive, um, empowering spin on things. And, and I did walk out of that doctor's office, yes, devastated, yes, still mourning my old life, yes, wishing I wasn't going through this, but also with a determination that no, I don't think so. This is not how my story ends. I'm gonna prove this doctor wrong and I'm gonna do it for myself and for my kids. I'm gonna find a way to feel better. And that's when I started changing the way that I ate drastically. I started the AIP within like a couple days of my diagnosis. Um, and I started to be really mindful about listening to my body, about my lifestyle choices, about my mindset. I asked our kids because, so I, the reason why this video is also hard to film is is because it's not like we sat down and had like a conversation with our kids like this is what's going on and so and it's been a year since then and so I asked my husband today I woke up and I thought okay I I need to film this somebody's asking me for it they need help like I need to at least share what we did and so I asked my husband you know, from, you know, from his point of view, what does he remember? How did we tell our kids? And, and him and I both, um, you know, he said this too, that it wasn't like a necessarily like official conversation. It was more like looping our kids in that, that um, there were some changes in my health and that we're gonna start eating healthier and we're gonna start doing things um, a little bit different. And that it almost like it was a positive thing. And so, from his memory, he remembers it just kind of being like a dinner time, like um, type of conversation. From my perspective, it was like a natural thing as well. Like I don't, I don't remember. I know we didn't like, we weren't like doom and gloom. We were very much coming at it from a place of like positivity and hope and faith. Like we know that that we have, even if we didn't say this like specifically, but that we we trust our Father in Heaven and we trust that we're having this experience so that we can learn and grow and that there is a way through it and that it may not be rainbows and butterflies and easy, but that we're gonna be better through, through going through this, if that makes sense. Um, and I asked my kids, that, well this morning, who are again almost 14 and almost 16, and our almost 16 year old said, I, you know, I just told her what I was filming on and I just said, do you have any, you know, thoughts? Do you remember how we told you? Do you remember when we told you? Do you remember like anything like from that, you know, period of time? And she's like, no, no, I don't, I don't remember like a specific conversation. I, I, you know, I remember like you, you were going through some health things and we changed how we ate, but I don't remember like a specific conversation or are being scared or being anything like it was just something that we went through and I, I don't remember and so that was kind of her point of view and then I and then I asked our almost 14 year old our son and I wanted to I, I took a couple notes because I, I loved how he said some things and so I wanted to share so he said he just remembered that I would go to the doctor quite often during that time. Again, I was seeing like a natural path and I was trying to find answers. So they were doing ultrasounds and blood work and all the things. Um, so he said he was confused about that. And then he said that one day he remembers I came home and that dad and I were talking a lot about what I could eat and what I couldn't eat. And then he said, and then all of a sudden we started eating super healthy after that. And he said it was kind of weird because one day we went from this to this. and. Um, it was interesting that he said that because I started eating AIP, but we did keep some of you know the family meals at first, like more what we were used to. So I would eat a dinner and they would eat a dinner. And then in time, we just gradually um, started all eating healthier. So he said that he did think that that was kind of weird. Um, and he said <laughs> the next morning after he heard dad and I talking, um, his dad, my husband and I talking, he said he he said he woke up and I was making a crazy breakfast hash and he was scared <laughs> of the food. Uh, he said it was good and he said that that and then I asked him if he remembers like me ever talking about Hashimoto's and he said he didn't remember or realize or understand like well the term Hashimoto's until later when he said I was building like my website and started sharing you know my story and then that's when he understood that it was called Hashimoto's he just remembers that he did you know he was 10 and that we did go from eating a certain way to a certain way and he was kind of like huh 
and, um, and, and that he did understand it was you know, for my health. The way I responded to this challenge, the way I responded to this you know, situation, it, it did feel heavy as a mother. I, I did feel that our kids did have a front row seat to me losing my health and I felt bound and determined that they were gonna have a front row seat to me regaining it. And I felt bound and determined that I didn't have all the answers and and like I started changing how I ate and how I lived and how I thought and I didn't know if it was gonna help. Like I did it. I wanted to model for my kids what it looks like. This is what you do when life throws you the nastiest curveball. This is what you do when you know hard times come and that you can become stronger for them. And there was a period of time where I didn't know if I was gonna get better. And I didn't know if what I was gonna do was working and I didn't know if I was ever gonna get to our son's baseball games again. And I didn't know if I was gonna be able to go grocery shopping without, you know, having it be this whole ordeal again. I, I didn't know if I'd be able to get out of bed and feel good again. And so um, there is that scary moment, moments, days, weeks. Um, and so I, I really wanted to set an example of faith um, for our kids and in finding joy and in laughing even during the hardest of times and so I felt the weight of that and I, I kept taking steps even even as I felt that fear and even as I felt that uncertainty and even as I felt like I wasn't sure um, I think I knew that I think I had faith that everything is figure outable and that um, I, I was I was a warrior, I was gonna figure this out. And so I, I, I'm I, grateful not for Hashimoto's and not for the heartbreak and the pain, emotionally and physically that I went through, but I'm grateful for who I've become through the experience. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that I set this example for our kids. I felt that as much as I spent years homeschooling, I felt like this is one of the most important lessons I can teach them. And I felt like they were going to learn more from my example in this experience, more than any words I could ever say. And I, I will say, I didn't act like everything was rainbows and butterflies all the time. I let them see me struggle and fumble around in the kitchen. I let them see me try nasty things and say, oh, that was gross. I told them, yeah, I, I do want to eat that, but I'm going to eat this because it's what my body needs. And, and they saw me when I no longer wanted to eat those things. They saw me go on vacations and every time I'd go on vacation, it was all about the burgers and the fries and the nachos and the desserts and all the things. And now I go on vacation and I still eat healthy and it's about well, the connection and the time and the joy and the being well together. Is it a perfect science? No. Have I handled it the right way? I don't know. Um, this is all I know. This is how we handled it. I just. Again, like I just encourage you to listen to your gut, listen to what you feel is right for your family. If you are a person of faith, like trust the Lord and the way he's leading you and the way he's guiding you. As much as I love to share my story, I, I try to be very open about it hasn't been perfect. It's been incredibly hard on our marriage. It's been incredibly hard on our family, but we try to have it be an experience that makes us stronger, that grows us closer to each other and the Lord. And some days it looks beautiful and some days it looks messy and that's okay. So I did wanna share a few ways that um, we did get our kids involved or that we tried to um, in this process. And that is we tried to have them help us cook and help us chop things. And we taught them how to chop things and we taught them how to cook. Um, our kids know how to make a lot of things. Okay, another thing that we did um, when I was at my rock bottom is we, we taught our kids how to grocery shop. Yes, at 10 and 12. Um, I don't think I learned how to grocery shop till I was in college. <laughs> So at my rock bottom, my husband did do a lot of the grocery shopping. It went from me doing virtually all of the grocery shopping um, to my husband taking it over. And this was before there was like all the online shopping and stuff. Um, that would have been like such a lifesaver. So when I would need to go grocery shopping, I would take them and I would have them help me pick out fruits and vegetables. And they'd get excited about trying new weird vegetables that we never tried and, and you know, and trying things. Um, and, and I just, I taught them how to pick out, you know, produce and I taught them how to look, you know, for the best like prices on things. I taught them where in the store things are that we needed. And it really came in handy because as as you know, if you're an autoimmune warrior, there are ups and downs. There are days where you do have energy and that you do feel better and there are days where where you feel awful again. And 
it's very much like that in the beginning and for a lot of people and it was you know for me now I feel great most days, um, but I'm well into my journey. But at this time, back at my rock bottom, I was, I was having a day where I was feeling very, very, very rough, and my husband was out of town, um, and we needed some things at the store. And so I remember, like I knew I could not grocery shop like I, like I couldn't. And so I drove to the store, parked right by the entrance, set our kids in and they were able to pick up the few items that we needed and to check out you know with my credit card and to come back um, to the car and it was such a blessing and they felt so big and so grown up and so anyways um i'm not saying teach your kids how to grocery shop i'm just saying that that's an example where they felt empowered and they felt like they were helping and serving me and our family um the other thing was i i was drinking you know green juice at this time and you know we got a juicer and they loved to help me juice and to you know try different creations and things um we go on walks and and i really feel like our kids learned a lot of empathy from this experience we go on walks and they saw me go from doing you know tough mutters and workouts and intense um, training to not being able to walk around the block without stopping and so um, it was an experience for them to see that change and then to walk around that block with me and to see me get stronger and to see me add more and more and more and now I walk several miles a day and I do other a lot of other activities and uh, workouts but I bring that up because there were days where I'd have to even around that block I'd have to stop and rest and they would be patient and they would cheer me on so my whole point is let your kids cheer you on um, cheer them on and there are so many ways to connect and to show love and to spend time even at a rock bottom so I I did things like even though I couldn't go outside and play baseball our son loves baseball he loves watching any team so every day we would watch a whole baseball game together um, you know like an MLB game um, we would do puzzles we would read um, either together or independently a couple of the books that I, I loved at this time were things like um, there were children's books and and I'll go ahead and I'll link them but they talk about like hard days and they talk about you know character growth and so I'll link a few of my favorites of those um, and then we would have meals and we would cook because I did have to be even though I felt so horrible I did have to go prepare food because you can't well the way I was eating you well you can't eat out like that and so when I had to spend energy in the kitchen what precious you know, little energy I had, I made sure they were with me and we were doing, we were spending time in the kitchen. I would turn on music and we would dance kind of silly. And so I just encourage you to find things and ways to show love and support. Um, just let them talk and listen. Like I remember laying down so many times and having them just like talk to me and we just talk and chat and listen. Um, we also had like a swimming pool at the time. And so even though I couldn't like do all of the like jumping in and the um, in the races, I would be like a judge and say, all right, I'll judge the biggest splash or I'll judge the smallest splash or the mediumest splash. <laughs> we thought of so many games or I'll count and see how long it takes you to swim all the way across that pool or I'll see, you know, like just coming up with games where you can be involved without having to like physically be involved, if that makes sense. Okay, so that's how I told our kids about Hashimoto's. That's how we handled it. Um, let me know if you have any questions at all. I'm happy to answer them. Let me know in the comments how you handled it and what works for your family. I'd love to hear. Um, please know that I am sending you so much, so much, so much love and support from my mama heart to yours. Please know that you are exactly the kind of mama that your kids need. I believe that that our Father in Heaven allows us to have these experiences because we can learn and grow and we can we can become stronger through them. And what an incredible opportunity that we have as autoimmune warriors to set incredible examples for our kids. Not of being perfect, but just of what, what we do, how we handle it when life takes us down a road that we never expected and that we can find joy and that we can find peace and that we can choose faith and gratitude and all of those things. 
again not that there aren't hard days there are and it's okay to ugly cry and it's okay to feel all the all of those negative emotions that naturally come with autoimmunity and Hashimoto's let's just not allow ourselves to sit in them too long let's stand up and say this isn't this isn't what I want this isn't how my story ends I'm going to find a way to find peace and joy um, and gratitude and laughter and hope if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please comment, let me know. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for your support of my work, of what I do. I truly appreciate it. I do it for you and I, and I just love you so much. Have an awesome week.